All right, welcome back to another video. More CPU stuff. I know I'm sure it's uh it's been like four videos in a row now about CPUs, but uh <laughs> we're back we're back with a good one today. So uh in the last video, I moved this guy upstairs. Um this is an Asus Strix B560E-F gaming board that I got with the 7900X bundle. That I have swapped out with an MSI board because of all the stuff that happened in the last video, which I'll I'm not gonna go over again. I just don't really feel like it. So have everything wired up. I have to flash a USB still, which I forgot to do before the video. But I'm running FlareX5. This is CL30 RAM. It was the same price as CL32, so I went with the CL30. Kind of a no-brainer on that. I have a Peerless Assassin, which I had on the 7900X, which I removed and replaced with an Assassin King. So the Peerless Assassin will go onto here, and we'll be we'll be installing a 7950X 3D, which is awesome. I got this guy on eBay. It was an auction. I paid 525 plus tax and shipping, so it came out came out to around 570, which was the same was $10 cheaper than buying a 7950X non-3D from Best Buy on sale. So I made out pretty good buying this one and efficiency wise it's a lot better according to some people in Rabbit's Discord, specifically Bitcoin Andy who has some crazy good settings for efficiency and I think uh, Rabbit just released a video, uh, well today as of recording but it'll be a few days later for you guys but also with having crazy good efficiency, I think it was getting 22 kilohash at like 130, 126 watts or something crazy. So we're gonna go ahead, install that, paste it up, cooler. I got the fans right here also, and I'll flash the USB drive and hopefully we can get this guy up and running and it'll be stable. This one will probably live here. I have actually ran out of my 20 amp circuit. It's fully loaded now, so I'll, I do have a 30 amp breaker and a PDU already, so I, I really just need to get wire, which is like, I think 10 to wire on Amazon is like 75 bucks for 50 feet or something. So we'll have to do some measurements and see how much footage I actually need to install that. But currently I'm not expanding anymore unless some like crazy good deal comes around on GPUs or CPUs. But if anything, I can always just hook up some Wi-Fi USB adapters and also just run them here off of this 110 outlet over there because it has plenty of power to provide still so it would be ideal to have stuff downstairs in the basement kind of on a wire rack but I have to move some stuff around and make some more space it's not set up too well I wish like the whole table in the middle was like not there and it was just wire racking because that was kind of the idea I had for here. Just put in a like three shelf rack and I can have like CPUs on the first floor here and then CPUs up here. So like two each floor and at least have four CPUs here, which would be nice. But we'll see if that ever happens or if I come up with some other sort of solution. But I'll get all this assembled, flash, um, Hive OS. I'll do the beta. I'll put it on here. I'll also... Wow, this is not focusing. Just some PNY, USB 3.0. Uh, flash Hive Beta to get temperatures. I'll also install a Wi-Fi driver on here just in case. I found a good video that goes over that and super simple. And we'll hopefully tune this guy and we'll go from there. All right, got the 7950X 3D build together. This is first boot. Going through some cycles here. I already got my keyboard hooked up. Monitor ready to go. Hopefully, I, hopefully we can get into the BIOS. Oh, looks like we sure can. Oh, a new CPU installed. Blah, blah, yep. That's awesome. So that means it's good. Uh, press Y. Oh, Y, I guess. Or N. FDLI, uh, let's see, you can swap back to LCU. 
I pressed Y. I, I don't know. I might have pressed the wrong one. I'm not sure. I'll keep smashing the BIOS <laughs> delete here. <laughs> I might have just pressed the wrong thing. Who knows, but... Got a green light. Oh, F1. Cool. Okay. So, the main settings we need to change. Well, we'll go to advanced mode right away. Uh... Let's see, uh, memory frequency, nothing here yet. Forget where the uh, expo tweaked, I believe was the setting. 6000's fine, we don't change anything with the DRAM stuff. I'm looking for CCD, I have to change that to 1.1. So I'm not quite sure where that is on the Asus boards, but all right, uh, after way too much looking around for the wrong thing, I have found what I was looking for. So it's under CPU sock voltage under the AI tweaker tab, and you want to set this to manual. And it's called VDD SOC voltage override. You do 1.1 or 1.0. I'm going with 1.1. That was suggested to me. Uh, they said it would be stable, and then we'll, we'll go down. By, well, from 1.1 stable, we'll go to 0.98, and then we'll go down by like 0.02 every time until it crashes, I guess. Or if I'm happy with how it is, in terms of hash rate wattage, we'll just keep it as is. So, we're now F10, save, yes. I did change AC power loss to power on. I changed the fan around to be at 65 degrees at 100, so... Hopefully it doesn't get to that, but I have it to 80 at 50 degrees or so. And I didn't change any uh, frequency or core voltages. That's all the same. I did enable Expo Tweaked. That was another thing. I did not change any RAM timings. I left them on the Tweaked setting. So hopefully, well, there goes the boots. So hopefully no crashes. Already in Hive. It might have me do like first time setup or something. I did move over my rig config, so we'll see what happens there. But all right, we uh, changed to 1.1 volts for the VDD SOC voltage, and I have made a flight sheet. I'm using all the threads for now. I might try some trick that works on the 5950X where you don't use two of the threads and see if the wattage changes. Uh, not the wattage, the hash rate. Just for fun. But I'm downloading XMRig right now. So hopefully that doesn't take too long on a <laughs> USB. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, so far so good. I don't know temperatures. I've forgot to look but we're not really mining yet so and doesn't really matter in terms of wattage yet but it's just at 51 right now so nothing too crazy I do wish I had a laptop here I am so so happy that these have integrated graphics because not having to need a GPU is amazing I ended up I am still waiting on a adapter for this I did order mini HDMI to USB-C as well as HDMI to mini HDMI like I maybe plug it in here so I'm still waiting on that to show up and I'll try to use that on my 3000 my 3900x and 5800x but I don't really feel like messing with them too much but having integrated graphics has is so nice it's just such a nice convenience thing too so I'm a big fan of that so I I know that like that alone might make me only want to get a AM5 CPUs at this point because it's just such a good good convenience factor. But I suppose if most people will just run Pico PSUs off servers and standard ATX, I guess you always have power anyway. All right, uh, this is a day later after doing some more testing with the 7950X 3D. Um, I did get. Uh, cables to potentially run this mini HDMI GT520 card I think it was and they ended up not working so I have mini HDMI to full HDMI 
and I plugged it into here using like this HDMI and it did not work at all there was no there was no display at all I also tried mini HDMI to USB-C because there's two USB-C ports here also did not work so after making that mistake of not realizing that there's only mini HDMI on here I did order a GT710 which was like more than this was I guess it was like sixteen seventeen dollars with shipping and taxes so but that has full HDMI versus mini so hopefully that works this guy does turn on and I, I suppose it works but I was not able to get any display using mini HDMI to full HDMI back to mini HDMI or just mini to USB-C so I'll just have to return all those cables that I got which is no big deal Amazon's very good with that which is awesome so but back to this guy so since I can't have display or well I can but I'll just tell you the settings because it's only like uh, four things that changed so I changed the uh, memory preset that I finally found it. it was under like DRAM timing control right at the top there was a bunch of presets I did Hynix the very first one it was like 6200 and then a bunch of DRAM timing, so I picked that, and then under the My Favorites tab was AMD Overclocking, and it was a, I believe it was Precision Boost Overdrive, and yeah, I set it to Eco Mode, 65 watts, I changed the VDD SOC voltage to 1.1, I was on 1.05, and it wasn't having it, I think. So I changed it back to 1.1, and then the VDDIO voltage I changed to 1.35. And I also have uh, PBO on, but just for the curve optimizer, I did all cores. I did try negative 30, and it was crashing. So I think that was part of the problem, also potentially with the low uh, SOC voltage. So I went to negative uh, 25 all cores. And I'm sitting at around 21.45 kilohashes, and wattage over here, uh, 141 watts. So, and I just need this thing to be stable and run. I'm not going for crazy numbers like some people. I, I did try to mess with some other settings to potentially lower the wattage and some other recommendations, but none of those worked. So, and as you can see, the GPU light is on. I was having some issues as well with trying to get this thing to boot with no display adapter or like a dummy plug-in and I thought it wasn't booting but I was just waiting not long enough checking Hive OS before this guy actually worked and booted into Hive so after like a couple minutes it eventually did boot even though this light is on it still posts and all that stuff so and then I did try the Wi-Fi adapter. It said it was connecting, but then I was getting a bunch of like DNS error temporary failures. So for now, I just went wired because I did have a slot for one still. So if this eventually moves downstairs with another motherboard combo and I do like the Pico and split it and all, then I'll also try to run wired down there. I still have a few slots left on my uh, unmanaged switch. It was an 8 port. I'm using five or six of them right now, so I have a few slots left, but we're maxed out on power anyway. So the next thing is to figure out how much wiring I need, 10-2 uh, wire, and I already have a 30 amp and a PDU, so I just have to figure out how to, how much wiring I really need, just so that I can then run that circuit eventually, but for now we're maxed out on power. And I'll leave all the settings that I changed down below and uh, links to everything. So I'll, I'll have links to the motherboard, the RAM cooler, and the CPU as well. I'll even put this guy in here, the, uh, the monitor that I use as well, just in case. I know some people asked about it. But I'll leave everything in the description. And this is just a uh, 750G2 powering this guy. This is kind of where my workbench, test bench is, so... Yeah, that, that's that's all we got so far, and uh, in the next few days I did order something uh, very, very exciting. Um, I don't want to 
say what it is yet, I think, but it's exciting, and you can make a lot of custom things with it, so I'm sure you guys can guess what it is, but I pulled the trigger on one, I was going to go for a lower tier one, and just ended up moving my budget up and just paying the more expensive one, but that should be coming in a few days, and I am super, super excited to make videos on that, and all the things we can do with it, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the 7950X3D. It's a super, super good, efficient CPU. Just skip the non-3D and pay the extra 20, 30 bucks for for this one instead. That's what I ended up doing. But uh, I will see you guys in the next video.